What is going on everyone? I hope you were all having a fantastic day. So a few months ago, you might remember that I posted a video about upgrading from my old Toyota to my new Mazda 6 Grand Touring. And in that video, I talked about how I got such a good deal on that car. But I know one of the great points of debate when it comes to buying cars is whether you should buy it in cash, finance it, or in some cases, lease the car. So today, let's walk through a scenario on the true cost of paying cash, financing, or leasing your next vehicle so that you can make an educated decision on your next car purchase. Because other than maybe a house, a car is likely the biggest purchase that most of us will make in our lives. So you really want to make sure that you are an educated consumer. With that being said, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right into it. All right, so right out of the gate, I just wanna make it clear that I know this is a heated topic for whatever reason, and I'm sure that my opinion on things is probably a little different than your opinion on things, and that is completely okay, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this debate down in the comment section below. But before I give you my opinion on the best way to buy a car, let's walk through a scenario to see which option gives you the best mathematical advantage. So let's say you are ready to get a new car for whatever reason, and you decide that you wanna get a Mazda 6 sedan like the one that I purchased back in June. So if you wanted to buy that car today, brand new in the Grand Touring trim, it would cost you right around $30,000. Now, don't worry, I did not pay $30,000 for my car because I didn't buy it brand new and I would never buy it brand new. And we'll get into that debate a little later in the video. But for the sake of simplicity, you're looking at a $30,000 Mazda 6. So first of all, if you were to buy that car in cash, it would obviously cost you $30,000. Now, I know that you're going to have additional fees for titles and tags, but let's forget about that for the sake of simplicity and say that in cash, it would cost you $30,000. Now, the alternative would be financing that vehicle. So let's say that on that $30,000 vehicle, you made a 20% down payment, which would be roughly $6,000. So that means you paid $6,000 out of pocket and you are borrowing the remaining $24,000. And let's say you're borrowing that money at a 3.5% interest rate over five years or 60 months. And those are pretty average and realistic numbers in my opinion. That means that you would have a monthly payment of $437 per month. And at the end of five years, you will have paid two $2,196 in interest alone, meaning you paid over two grand to the bank just for giving you that loan. Now, for the sake of this conversation, let's assume that for this loan scenario, you're not borrowing that money because you literally can't afford to buy the car in cash, but you had another reason for doing that. I think most of us would agree that if you are borrowing that much money to buy a brand new car just because you literally could not possibly afford to pay for that in cash, then you are probably spending too much on that vehicle. Now, in regard to how much you should be spending, that's not really the topic of today's video, but the general rule of thumb that Dave Ramsey teaches and that a lot of people follow, myself included, is that you should have no more than 50% of your annual take-home pay in things on wheels. Now, let me be clear, that does not mean that you should be spending 50% of your income on your car because that is absolutely not true. This means that the total value of all of your cars, whether that be one, two, or 10, should be no more than 50% of your annual take-home pay. So if at the end of the year you make $50,000 after taxes, then the total value of all of your cars should be no more than $25,000 at any given time. But honestly, that's even pushing it in my opinion, and I really think you should keep the cost of your cars as low as possible, and that's coming from a guy who really likes cars. So obviously paying cash for your car would be mathematically the better option, but typically the argument in general for borrowing money is that you could take that money that you are not spending since you borrowed it and turn around and invest it for a higher return than your interest rate. And this is a very common argument when buying a house, for example, because if you borrowed $100,000 for that house instead of paying cash, then you could invest your $100,000 and earn, say, an 8% return on that money. And even if you're paying a 4% interest rate on your loan, you're still coming out 4% ahead at the end of the year. However, I'm here to tell you right now that that argument is absolutely useless when it comes to vehicles. And that's because real estate or buying a home is a fantastic investment and is actually one of the leading ways that people become millionaires here in the United States. However, a vehicle, on the other hand, is a depreciating asset, meaning it goes down in value, like really fast. In fact, depending on the make and model of your car, typically you're gonna lose nearly 50% of the value in the first four years alone if you're buying a new car. Now think of that as any other kind of investment, like a stock, for example. If I told you today that, hey, you should buy this stock and oh, by the way, four years from now, it's gonna be worth half as much as it is now, you probably wouldn't invest in that particular stock. Obviously a vehicle has more practical use in your day-to-day -day life than owning shares of a company 
company, so that's not necessarily a fair comparison, but just know that when you are buying a vehicle, it's going to lose value very, very quickly, especially if it is a new car. Now, you may be thinking that I completely forgot to talk about leasing a vehicle, since after all, that is in the title of the video, but that is for one very good reason, and that's because I personally feel that leasing a car is absolutely ridiculously stupid. If you're not familiar, when you lease a car, you usually pay a down payment, then have a monthly payment for a given period of time, just like financing a vehicle, and at the end of that time period, you typically have the option to either buy out the remaining balance of that vehicle, or just walk away from the lease, and the dealership or whoever is leasing that car is going to take it back from you. Now, I understand that there are limited scenarios where leasing does make sense. For example, if you drive very, very few miles, because the amount that you're paying each month is going to depend on how many miles you drive that car. However, for 95% of borrowers, you're going to be making a down payment, still have a monthly payment that is going to be lower than if you had financed, but it's still a monthly payment. And at the end of all of that, you either have to pay up the residual value of that vehicle, or they just take it back from you. That means you just paid all this money and literally have nothing to show for it. And the worst part is that dealership is going to take that car back and then sell it for a profit to someone who's actually going to get a decent deal on that car, considering most of the depreciation in value has already occurred. In fact, the Mazda 6 that I purchased back in June was actually a corporate lease, and it's a 2016, meaning I got a really good deal on that car, because remember how I said that cars lose most of their value in the first four years? Well, my car is four years old, and it was a corporate lease, meaning it is pretty much brand new and was never really driven by that company, yet I didn't have to bear the brunt of all of that depreciation. Meanwhile, some poor company made a huge down payment four years ago, still had monthly payments over the last several years, and at the end of all of it, the dealership came back and took that car away from them anyways. So at the end of the day, leasing isn't even a viable option when it comes to buying a car, in my opinion, and paying cash or financing it is really the only two options that are on the table, if you ask me. Now, again, I know that there are a million opinions on this topic, and obviously, buying it in cash is going to be the correct decision mathematically. But it really goes beyond that, and honestly, it's just not a good idea to find a car, whether that be new or used, that is unless you're using it as a tool to negotiate a good deal. I know that might sound a little ridiculous, but let me explain. The fact is, the amount of profit that a dealership makes on the actual car itself has dropped nearly 60% over the past few years. Dealerships are actually only squeezing out a few hundred dollars in profit per vehicle, and that's just because there is so much data and research tools online, and everyone knows exactly how much a particular car is worth. However, this has led dealerships to get really creative with how they squeeze extra pennies out of your pocket, and what they're making from financing has actually increased significantly over that same period of time. So when you get upsold on the extended warranties and the powertrain packages and 0% APY for the first year, you probably thought you got a really good deal. However, that's just the dealership's way of getting you to sign on the dotted line and squeeze that extra profit out of you over the period of your financing. So if you can use financing as a negotiation tool, then absolutely go for it, because nowadays, you're really not going to be able to negotiate a whole lot even if it is a used vehicle, just because everyone knows exactly how much a particular car is worth. However, if you are going to finance your car, I would strongly encourage that you still view this as a cash transaction and anticipate to pay that off within the shortest period of time possible. In fact, when I bought my car, I went and did a test drive and played it off like I wasn't really interested. And after nearly two full weeks, the manager of the dealership sent me an offer that was way below market value out of nowhere. And after pretending like he had convinced me to finance the vehicle over five years, I left with the exact car that I wanted for an amazing price, and less than a week later, I made one huge payment and completely paid off the entire balance of the loan, which probably didn't make the dealership too happy, but hey, it's my car now. So let me know what you think of this debate down in the comments section below, and what advantages or disadvantages you see to paying cash or financing a car. As always, if you did get value out of this content and you want to support me, it would mean a lot if you would hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with someone who you think could get value out of this content as well, and of course, take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.